Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 14 of We the Revolution. It is day 6 now, we have a new trial and the city is torn on, or well rather I am torn because what does my family want? Uh, first we're gonna read the news though. What do you know about the person who introduced himself as Ramel? Everyone deserves to know the truth about their colleagues. Meet me at 10 p.m. in the alley behind the Café Prokop. Come alone and you will learn the truth about Ramel's past. It is for your own good. Oh no. So, if I go to this, is this another trap? Is someone going to stab me again? Or will it turn out that... Rommel will watch us too and then he will be angry because we did not trust him or is Rommel really a bad person I mean although maybe maybe this is a trap because in the last intriguing it came out that Rommel had false information that Gobel wasn't the bad guy after all so that Gobel didn't order the murder of uh, Frederick so, maybe this is to inflict this trust into the player. Did he know our... did he really know our brother? Inviting me behind the alley, I think I have a little bit of a bad history with alleys and being stabbed and so... I don't know. Maybe we're going to get betrayed by Ramel. But on the other hand, even if someone, even if some random person tells us that he's a bad guy, would we still believe him? I can't stop thinking that this could also be a setup, and this could also be a setup that ruins maybe our relationship with Ramel. I think I'm not going to go. So, what is today's trial? He is accused of pandering. What does that mean? So, Arthur Bonnet, 38 year old director of the Odeon Theatre, has been accused of pandering. The law enforcement authorities have known about the brothel for a long time. Some of the actresses sell their bodies right after the play, using the acting as a pretext, but also to advertise themselves. Among the Odeon's clientele are members of the National Convention and officers. Thanks to them, director Bonnet is able to derive significant financial reward without fear of any consequences. The latest reports, however, seem too out outrageous to be ignored. Bonnet has been accused of pandering 13-year-old Olivia de Nerval, who was left in his care. The court administration learned about this from Arnaud de Condorcet, a friend of the recently guillotined father of the girl. Arnaud testified that Olivia de Nerval played a role in a private show titled The Misfortunes of Virtue, shown only to a small number of carefully selected guests. Usually after such private shows, some of the actresses have private meetings with their admirers. Arnaud witnessed that Bonnet ordered one of his subordinates, Maria de Reims, to walk Olivia to a room where Gustave Clavel, a theatre critic known for his lechery, has, was already waiting. Oh... No... The Condorcet's accusations quickly spread among the aristocrats who demand the immediate arrest and severe punishment of Bonnet. Meanwhile, Olivia refused to testify and Clavel has disappeared. Well, that sounds really grim. What's this? Brochure. The stars of the Odeon Theatre invite their fans to private spectacle. Okay, so this is like a price list. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, well then, let's start with the questions. There's one trap. I guess the victim is Olivia. Profits from prostitution is probably the accusation. No, it's not. Well, then probably the accusation is the accusation of pandering. So the brochure is definitely evidence. I guess this is the only evidence that we have, yes. I guess profits from prostitution could be the motive. Yes. Hmm. Meeting with the actresses could be the course of events. Yes. What is another accusation? So I guess the rendezvous with the critic could be the course of events. One of these is a trap. But which one? 
So the private performance could also be a course of events, and it could also be... It could also belong to the victim. I'm just gonna try with the course of events and we'll see if it's a trap or not. Yes, that was it. So that must be the trap. So this is also belonging to the victim. Okay. Citizen, what is your name? Arthur Bonnet, Monsieur le Judge. You are accused of pandering your minor ward, Olivia de Nerval, for your own financial gain. How do you plead to these charges? I did nothing of the sort who dares say so. Citizen Arnaud de Condorcet, present in the courtroom, claims that you did. That is slander, a plot against me conjured up by this man. I am the director of a most famous theater known throughout Paris, not a soutenir. The price list found during the investigation points to the contrary. You are jumping to conclusions. They will take him away and behead him any minute, that loathsome pimp. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Yeah, I mean, what else could be meant by this? How is he going to talk himself out of that? So, let's start with the witness again. Call in the witness, Maria de Rem. Witness, what is your name? I am Maria de Rem. What position do you have in the Odeon Theater? I am a Burmaiden. I manage the female personnel of the theater. I think I want to know who arranged this. I don't know how much use it would be to ask how m much money was asked for this. Who arranged Olivia de Nerval's meeting with Gustave Clavel? It wasn't an arranged meeting. Mr. Clavel was impressed by her performance and asked for the opportunity to talk to her. I assume that the meeting actually took place. Were they alone? Naturally, the director allowed it, so I found an empty room for them. So the accused knew about everything and gave his personal permission? Monsieur le Judge, nothing in the Odeon Theatre happens without the director's knowledge and permission. So he did know what was happening behind closed doors. Okay, so... What is the best question here? Apart from Gustave Clavel, did anyone else have a meeting with the accused ward? I guess that would be good to know. Or has Gustave Clamel or Clavel met with other actresses? Hmm, I guess the, the second question would be good to know if... Um, to find out what he did with these actresses. But the other question I think is better to find out about the theater owner. If he allowed other meetings with her too. So, let's go. Apart from Gustave Clavel, did anyone else have a meeting with the accused ward? No. Although Mr. Arnaud de Condorcet asked for such a chance before the performance and even wanted to pay for it. Wait, he's the one that... How interesting. Did the director give his permission? No, he flatly refused. He said that Olivia is not a professional actress yet and then she's too young to meet her admirers anyway. What was de Condorcet's reaction? He was very agitated. Vulgar even. I can't blame him. Olivia is a very talented apprentice. Wait, so the Condorcet, he was the one who... He was the one who gave this away. He was the one who accused him. Is this a campaign to... Make him look guilty? Do the meetings of the actresses with their audience conclude in bed? They are private meetings. I have no idea what happens during them. Can we assume that during those private meetings, the visitor and the visited engage in sexual activities? Allow me to repeat myself. I have never been present to such a meeting. I have heard gossip, of course, but I think that stems from the strong imagination of our clients. All of them. Our actresses are so adored for their incredible talents that I believe every man dreams about them, but they are only dreams. Are you saying that those men pay hundreds of francs for only a conversation? Some people pay for good wine, others for interesting conversation. It is none of my business. Hasn't seen anything, doesn't know anything, right? You charge your customers for meetings with the actresses. What exactly are they paying for? For a conversation, for a private show. Sometimes our ladies read poetry or sing. Such performances are extremely important for us, as the theater is very expensive to maintain. What an interesting way of improving the budget. Could you describe the rooms in which those meetings take place? 
Our stars have dedicated rooms where they can rest and prepare for the show. Are those rooms furnished with beds? Of course they are. After two hours of performing and dancing, they would be rather tired, don't you think? How many clients visit your stars in a single night? One or two. In very special cases, three, but I would rather not exhaust the actresses. You think conversations are exhausting? Their mouths must burn like hell, for, but not from talking. Behave, will you? They really are sensitive and should be treated with respect. Oh, no. How much of the revenue obtained through those private meetings lands in the theater's coffers? According to the agreement with the staff, 70%. That's a lot, I know, but maintaining the rooms, food and sometimes drink too, they all generate costs. Besides, if it weren't for the theater's reputation, you know. Do you receive a bonus for those meetings? Because of my ideas, the theater's profits are greater than ever. Am I rewarded for this? Of course, and it's only fair. So it is important to you to arrange as many of those meetings as possible? Yes, because it's in the theater's best interest. It is in your best interest, too. Yes, but that's not important to me. Why did Donerval come under your custody after her father's death? It is very simple. She was first put into an orphanage and I adopted her once I recognized her talent. What talent? Well, acting, of course. Children were giving performances in the orphanage. No, but I can recognize talent by watching how a child walks and holds their head, by listening to their voice and their choice of words. How a child walks, right? How often do you look for future actresses in orphanages? Not as often as I should. There is too little time for it, which is a shame, because you can find true stars among the orphans. Do those private meetings take place after the private shows? Not exclusively, but most of them do happen after such performances. Did Olivia de Nerval take part in such a meeting? If that's what Arnaud told you he's lying, I would never let a 13-year-old meet with her fans, not at this stage of her life and career. Why not? Wouldn't she just be having a conversation? Conversations can be exhausting and she's just a child. Why would the Condorcet lie? He has been trying to take over the position of the Odeon Theatre's director. He even threatened to do whatever he could to destroy me, so he came up with this pandering. Oh, 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 no. Okay, so I'm a little bit undecided here, because on the one hand, I don't know if he's really trustworthy. He's telling the truth. I mean, sometimes he's acting a little strange, like, this, well, acting, of course. It's always a bit weird. But, I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, I'm just reading this, so maybe I'll, I just read it wrong. So, I mean, the witness stated too that she well i mean it would have been nice to know now if um if the critic wanted to meet other girls as well but if she really just was left in with just was left alone to talk with the critic maybe the critic didn't even do anything although on the other hand why would he disappear then Olivia refused to testify and Clavel has disappeared. Why would he disappear? Why wouldn't he just say that they just had a talk? And then on the other hand, it does look strange though now that the, accus that the accuser of him is his rival for the job and wants to destroy him. So I don't know. Do you confirm that your ward was acting in a private show, The Misfortunes of Virtue, performed to a very limited audience? Of course, where else could she learn acting if not on stage? Was she also supposed to learn during her meeting with Clavel? I bet she also gave a performance, just something different from the play. I would hope so, that man is incredibly well versed when it comes to theatre, his remarks must have been valuable, invaluable. I don't know, I really don't. I'm gonna ask him the last question too. What role did Olivia de Nerval play in The Misfortunes of Virtue? Oh, a minor one, a bit part really. She played one of the country women harassed by a depraved Marquis. If it was a bit part, the theatre should charge Clavel 200 francs according to the brochure, did you? It was actually a background one, so we would charge 50. However, since Citizen Clavel met with Olivia to teach her, I decided to waive the payment. It was, after all, for Olivia's own benefit. Oh no. I'm sure it was for Clavel's benefit too. 
Are you planning on charging people for meeting Olivia in the future? I... I mean, yes, why not? If she decides to stay in a theater, of course, and I hope that she will. And you will financially benefit from that. Well, yes, I would. The problem is, I will have to let him go free now. Because... The jury wants him to go free, and I'd rather not oppose the jury. He is a sleazebag. Let's be honest here. But... I don't know if he did it. Maybe he really believes that what he's offering for money is just time with the actresses and not particularly like a brothel, but also for creative or cultural exchange or something. Maybe he really believes that. Maybe that's his intention. I mean, in his eyes he just wants to make profit to keep the theater alive, so why not? But. I mean, it is suspicious that the guy who brought in the accusation, this the Condorcet, is actually the rival of Bonnet and wants to take him down. So I guess this was like found food for him when he saw, when he realized that he arranged a meeting for a 13 year old girl. But the other thing is, we. And maybe I should have asked this. But on the other hand, if we had asked the other question, then we wouldn't have known that... I think the other question that we asked was a was a very good one, too. I think it was the second one. I think it was the second one, and we chose, apart from Gustav Clavel, did anyone else have a meeting with the accused? And that's when she told us that the Condorcet was the one was one the one who asked for it once so it is suspicious and it is not great what he's doing on the other hand it's also suspicious that clavel has disappeared and now even that we know that he was charged nothing to meet olivia because i don't know if it's just an act or if he's really that or if bonnet is really that naive i have asked all the questions and it's still, and I still don't know for sure. And to be honest, I don't know. I, de I definitely don't think that he should be free. But on the other hand, it could also... I don't know. He Maybe he is really just a naive idiot who really believed that most of his actresses have, you know, cultural discourse or something with people that have private sessions with them when instead it's not or he's just a really good actor himself and play and toys with us so maybe this was a plan of his all along but uh, i don't know so you know i'm a little bit torn and i'm a little bit happy now that i have to follow the jury's decision now I don't know if I'm happy that he's going free, but I also don't know if I would be happy if he was about to be executed. I wish I could send him to prison, but I can't. So I guess I'll just have to uh, set him free. That loses a lot for me over the common folk, but I don't know. I can't help it. And I'm not sure. I am really not sure. So, let's find out. Was this act counter-revolutionary? No, it wasn't. How old is Olivia de Nerval? He, She's 13. According to Bonnet, why did he take the girl from the orphanage? Because he saw talent in her. What happened to the money earned from the meetings with the actresses? It was shared. Well, not equally shared, but it was still shared. I think he got 70%. So if this was counter-revolutionary, then I don't know anymore. The judgment for Arthur Bonnet is not guilty. Take the defendant away. Now hate me, audience, hate me. Not guilty? How is that possible? Come on, he runs a brothel. The judge must like his actresses. Even if you do not believe what has been said about Olivia, you can see that the theater is little more than a brothel. Mm -hmm. 
Well, but we didn't lose reputation at least. I really... Oh, the jury support. Jury notice you're making the right choices and upholding justice. They, we, they speak well of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That is very nice of you. I don't know if I just made the right decision or not. I really don't know. So, the Renards were responsible for Frederick's death. Everything points to that. We will never be free of them. They will pay for it. I will do anything. The Renards have to pay. What good are revolutions and rebellions if we cannot demand justice? Oh no. My wife almost hates me now. You gather the Fidel men and attend a political debate at the one and only Café Procop. Hopefully this time there will not be any fistfights. Oh! That's nice. Cleaning out the attic. The attic has grown dusty and cluttered. Mathilde has not been very energetic about housekeeping lately. Not that one can blame her. Let the male part of the family roll up their sleeves and clean. I think I should do something to appease my wife a little bit because we will soon have something negative. Make her like us a little bit. Fr Bernard likes that too, so... Sorry, Dad. Okay, so these guys are a little bit heated up, so he's going to do this. Um, guess we're going to try to take back this district. Okay, and I think he is he's unlocking a section. That's a good idea too. Okay. Oh no. I forgot to do an action in the town square. Although I think I only had one point. I tried to stop him, but the rascal kept fighting and was going to yell so loud the whole court would hear him. Do not worry, I recognize that young man. He was the one who turned Archbishop Gobel's life upside down. My name is Boutin. I am his son. I suppose I know why you came here. You should know, however, that Gobel is no longer an Archbishop and is now immune. Help me, please, in any way you can. Are you deaf, boy? Did you hear what I said? Gobel is untouchable since he made an alliance with Hébert. If you had come to me sooner, I went to Jacques Louis de Ville, to Citizen Danton. Danton will not help you, of that I am certain. Listen to me, it is over. Gobel will be a successful politician, so take your mother far from Paris and forget about everything. My mother died a few years ago, despairing and humiliated as she pined for her love. I really am sorry for your loss, but there is not a thing I can do. The world loves the new Archbishop Apostate. So nobody will help me? No, I am sorry. You have to live with that. Oh no. Ooh, what happened to him? Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no, what? Oh no, 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 no. You made a mistake. We wanted to give the information to you for free as a token of our goodwill. We sent someone to you, a man who knew certain things about your friend, but today we learned that his throat was cut. We are giving you one last chance. Arrange a meeting with Ramel, or whatever you call him, unless you would prefer to share the fate of our friend. We want to meet him today at 9 p.m. Same place. Really? I'm not giving you him. Come on. And I can't do anything? Damn it. There was a time when I had a lot of influence points to spare. Why not now? So I just have to ignore this, right? I'm sorry. I hope I don't die. Although you should never give in to blackmail. So he is accused of attempted murder. 
As we have been informed by the inhabitants of the Latin Quarter, a certain freak and recluse has poisoned a local well that is used by a couple of nearby tenements. As can be read in the denunciation, several citizens have suffered with illness as a result of this crime. The defendant is Gabriel Rosé, and the soldier sent to arrest him confirmed the neighbor's opinion about his eccentricity. Eccentricity. The man lives with two servants on the fourth floor of a building on Rue sur Pond. At the moment of arrest, his apartment was in complete darkness, and the external appearance and behavior of the host was described as repugnant. You will be able to observe it yourself in the courtroom. This case file includes the content of the denunciation, from which you will learn more about Rosé's crime. Okay, so he's a strange guy that is accused of poisoning a well. Anonymous tip. Authorities of Paris in the last few days, the water in our well started to stink. It's so bad that some folk even started paying carriers to get water from the public fountain by the university. Those who drank the water fell, fell ill, some worse than others. One fellow by the name of Lambert Casal, my friend, vomited into a bucket all night long. It had to be cleaned up, of course. There's no doubt about who's behind the poisoning of the well. Across the street lives Rosé, an ugly pig and a freak. He only lives the house. He only leaves the house in the evenings, and even though he covers his face, we know what kind of monster he is. There's no doubt hates people, and probably threw a dead body in there so we don't have anything to drink and we drop like flies. And the freak himself started taking water from the public fountain. Well, ha. <laughs> Because it's a poisoned well. Okay, so did he really do it, though? Because that's also, that's again, just hearsay. He's a peculiar kind of guy. Then let's go. The offender's personality is probably that he's a freak. No, it's not. Really? I always mess up on the first try. Maybe that he's a recluse. Yes, that was it. Um... Witnesses could be the servants. No? Then who is a witness? Or was it that the witnesses stated that he poisoned something? <sighs> I don't know. Or is the accusation poisoning them? Or is the accusation of having dropped... No, the accuser said that he dropped the corpse in the well, so the accusation is probably that. And maybe that he's a freak too. No, it's not. So the crime scene was the well. Maybe dark apartment and the two servants belong to his or his personality too, because it. Why would it be a motive? Okay, so the dark apartment is probably. That's not what the witnesses saw. So, it must be this. Okay, getting closer. Poisoning, and the freak. His motive could be because he was a freak. At least that's what the accusers say. Yes. So the poisoning is either a motive or it's what the witnesses say. Let's go, let's go with the witnesses. Yes. Okay. Oh, well. Is your name Rosé? Yes, Gabriel Rosé. You are accused of poisoning the well. Would you like to say anything in your defense? Ever since I was a child, I've had skin problems from exposure to light. Does this disease have anything to do with your appearance? Probably. I wasn't born this way. Did you poison the well or not? Of course I didn't. What an absurd accusation. Okay, let's call in... Wait, Kazal is who? Who is Kazal? Oh, he's the guy that vomited all night. Oh well, then let's ask him. Call him Lambert Casal. Your name? Lambert Casal, Monsieur le Judge. You have accused Citizen Rosé of poisoning the well. I have, and I'm not ashamed of it. He did well. <laughs> have you been neighbors for a long time? For as long as I can remember. And he has not disturbed you so far. He sure has, but during the ancient regime, no one paid attention to our denunciations. Did you witness Rosé poisoning the well? I think that's a good question, because no one ever witnessed it. Everyone just accused him of it. Did you witness Rosé poisoning the well? No, but it couldn't have been anyone else. Oh, jeez. Why is that? 
everyone around is normal while this one just look at him he's not even human oh come on that is so low not human he's a revenant he crawled from a grave to scare people Do you admit to poisoning the well with a corpse? No, that is absurd. I understand. Do you have evidence to support your innocence? Has anyone taken the trouble to pull that supposed corpse out of the water? It's pitch black down there in the well, can't see nothing. I'm asking questions here. No, I have no evidence of my innocence. Yeah, but come on, nobody has evidence that he did it either. Do you avoid your neighbors? Yes, as they do me. Have people ever tried to remove you from the neighborhood? Certainly. I've lost count of how many times. Can you elaborate? What exactly did they do? I could go on for some time. They threw stones at my windows, threatened my servants. There was one sadist who bet my dog to death with a stick when I was 15 years old. Should I continue? Once, when I decided to take an evening walk, I had to escape from... I understand. You can stop there. That poor guy... He's making that up. Shut up! I wish I were. Guess it's only normal that he shuns company, though. The file stated you shun company. I would have, that was obvious. Please answer and refrain from commenting. Do you dislike people? I did not poison the well. Your neighbors claim otherwise. If someone says they saw me, they're lying like a mongrel dog. With contempt for people like that, they should cut his ugly head off. Contempt? I'm the one who should be taking revenge for contempt, for women covering children's faces whenever I pass, for my lonely childhood, for... We are not discussing your life now, but the issue of the well being poisoned. Of course, nobody ever talks about me. It's as though you could get infected from merely saying the words. I am disgusted with all of you. As we are with you, monster. Shut up, people. Really? That poor guy. Do your servants carry water from the well for you? Usually they do. Why only usually? They, the well usually stank after it rained, so I would give them money to fetch water from the fountain. Did they also drink it? Of course, they are good women. They always eat and drink whatever I'm having. The monster sluts. I wonder what else they did together. Oh my god. People are such monsters. Seriously, I am losing every respect that I had for the common folk because right now they're just hungry for decapitations. Ever since the guillotine, someone of the free folk ever wants someone to go free? Well, I guess, yeah, they did. But seriously, they wanted to, to get decapitate a chess maker. You know, it's really hard to, I don't know, please them anymore because they're just so irrational. Can you afford the water carriers and servants? Fortunately, I can. His lordship monster wears Fustian. Silence in court. What is your profession? In my condition, Monsieur le Judge, sometimes I can't be far from the chamber pot for three days in a row, and then I spent the following two in bed. So you do not work? No. Then how do you support yourself? I inherited some money from my father. He was a manufacturer, and I sold the factory after he died. The father an exploiter and the son a freak. What do you do all day? I mostly read literature. Neighbors call you a freak and a monster. Is that surprising? Have you ever caused anyone harm? I suffer enough as it is. There is no need to harass others. People are disturbed by your permanently covered windows. Sunlight causes me pain. I don't intend to hurt myself for the sake of appearing normal. That poor guy... I really believe him. This is just stupid. He's going free. They just hate him for how he looks. That's why they want him gone, because they're scared of him. <sighs> Late in the evening, Joseph Compère was assaulted in his small butcher's house. He so skillfully defended himself with a cleaver that the assailant bled to death a few blocks away. Compère did not report his crime. The guard found him after interrogating witnesses. Well, it was self-defense, although he didn't. 
A rural aristocrat, Thomas Levasseur, was publicly and falsely accused of not paying the tailor Jean-Yves Noir for 13 pairs of trousers. Levasseur, who filed a charge in his defense, presented receipts proving that he had, in fact, paid for the trousers. What, what, is, what is going on here? What am I going to judge? Well, then he's going free, I guess. Why would I behead him? Monsieur Rossignol, a cloth merchant, was dining at a restaurant near Saint-Chapelle when a waiter, Florian Boisselot, accidentally spilled sauce over him. Rossignol's silken shirt was destroyed. Well, so what? I don't really understand why this, why the top we reads that. I thought it just that those were the accused. So why would he be accused? What? I don't understand. Guess I'm in a good mood today. Everyone's going free. No, I'm not in it. It doesn't depend on the mood. I'm just letting everyone go free because I think they deserve to. So, did the, conf did the defendant confess to the crime? No. Was well, his act counter revolutionary? No. How does the defendant earn a living? Um, he sold his father's factory. So, what is that? Why were people drinking rancid water from the well? That could only be the question that we didn't ask Kazel. The fountain was too far away. I guess it was like that, wasn't it? Or was it because... Can you afford the water carrier? So maybe it costs a lot? Clean water was more expensive? Let's try this, I don't know. According to the denunciation, why did Rosé poison the water? Well, it was not an act of revenge. He hates people or he's the devil? I think he never called him the devil, but I think it's because he hates people? I don't know. We asked him if he hated people, so maybe it was because of that. Citizen Rosé is not guilty of poisoning the well. Release him. The well didn't poison itself. Yeah, but he also didn't do it, so maybe it was you. The judge is protecting a monster from hell. Shut up, people. Oh, okay. So it was correct. But not the clean water, though. But still. Ooh. People throw us flowers. Nice. Okay, you're free to go. Bye. I'm afraid what will happen tomorrow, because I didn't do anything. Gobel is currently immune. He has Hébert's support and the common folk appreciate what he did. He claims to be fully devoted to the rule of reason and to rejecting everything that is wrong in the clergy. Clever. Only Robespierre can stop him now, and he will if that rule of reason begins to cross the line. Or if they published their list of 73. I am sure Robespierre's associates were also listed there. Hébert's stupidity and ambition are what make him contend with Robespierre. He has long dreamt about this power, as have we all. Hébert will lose without the friends. He would destroy by revealing the list. And without his support from the clergy, Gobel is a weak ally. Yes, but Hébert is too proud to see that. I know him well. He heard the calling and will not let go. He must convince him, we must convince him, that fighting Robespierre alone means death. And what if he does not let go? Then we will all die the moment the crusade against the 73 starts. Hébert and his rule of reason will die next at the hand of Robespierre. The incorruptible will take control of Paris. Paris. We must introduce Hébert to someone else with the potential to have a power base, someone who will be a much stronger tool against Robespierre than Gobel. I think that I have the perfect candidate. You know what? Let's just do this. Let's go to a political debate with our son and our father. Yeah, I know why, if you don't like that. Oh, no, 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 you are not going... What? Why can I put him there? No! Oh, because it's too far away, I guess. I'm not going there when the revolutionary patrol is coming. He's inciting a crowd. Shall I move him there so he can fight too? Yeah, you go fight. 
I'll just go there. Okay, let's start intriguing. All those with power and influence who remain agree that Robespierre must disappear. Robespierre also knows that sooner or later there will only be one place available at the top. Ooh, okay, so now we need more successes to win. Then let's go. Oh, okay, so today we only have several minor cases to deal with. So, then let's do this day and then we're gonna end the episode. So I wonder what happens, because there's no news here, so... I wonder... Felicité Marie. Felicité Marie, a cook, accepted money from an Austrian agent who wanted her to poison her employer, General Trintignant. She fulfilled the task and went even further. She added a poisonous substance to the pâté, killing not only the general, but also his wife, younger son, and daughter-in-law. Um, Death. A drunk Severin Lebas jumped over a fence surrounding the warehouse of Carboneau, a merchant, as a shortcut on his way home. The area was guarded by dogs who chased away the intruder. Lebas jumped over a pile of goods and knocked over several vegetable containers. I don't know, I wouldn't call him guilty. A high-ranking postal officer has, according to the testimonies of his co-workers, spent several thousand francs on tobacco and cognac. Of course, he stole the money from the post office. Ah, uh, that is not the nice thing to do, so... death. Two young men were seen throwing stones at the windows of convention deputy Remy Crozier's house, breaking them. The stones landed in a room where Crozier's children were playing. Luckily, they were not harmed. I don't know. It's not something to die for. Joël Briand purchased 16 bear skins and 128 sable pelts at a market. Although the accused denies it, we, together with a group of merchants, are sure that he wanted to speculate and get rich at the expense of the citizens of Paris. Yeah, but you're just speculating that, come on. Paulette Pernet allegedly stole the laundry of her neighbor, Adrienne Escoffier. The clothes were drying in the yard. The apartment of the accused was searched and investigators found bed sheets that were immediately recognized by Escoffier. Yet, Pernet would not confess. This is just some stolen laundry. Come on, I'm not gonna decapitate someone over this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, too. So I wonder what will happen with this whole Ramel thing. Who are you talking to? You would be happy to hand power over to people who cannot even read properly. What? So you're saying that the poor are only good to die at the front? Oh, perhaps it is the destiny of the Paris Commune to be shot at in order to protect others. How dare you! Gentlemen, we met here to make an alliance. We must, since we are all burdened by weaknesses that Robespierre does not have. Hey, so it's time for a speech. I have two points. That's good. Let's reveal the first two. So, Robespierre is a dangerous maniac. People are withdrawn to that, from that. So, I guess it was ag aggressiveness, right? Hébert will lose if he has no allies. They're over he's oversensitive, so let's manipulate him. Attached. Gobel will gain more by discussing terms with Robespierre. Manipulation. I think attached was both manipulation. So let us go together and use the ambitious Tinville as our scapegoat. We're going to get rid of Tinville? Yeah! I'm all in for that. Huh, shall we pick carelessness or maybe humility? Yeah, I'm thinking about one of those, so I'm just gonna go with carelessness and let's see what happens. Okay, so we have all strong arguments. Okay, so I gotta say, I made a list once on what attitude requires what, but it turns out that, it, that it's two possibilities, because sometimes this is more, this is the perfect argument and sometimes it's not. We have a lot of strong arguments. And a weak argument. Will this be enough? Let's try. I don't know what else. Okay, let's go. 
Robespierre's paranoia has done enough harm already. It is our duty to eliminate such rabid vermin. France has survived ages of dictatorship. It will survive Robespierre as well. Why do we even talk to the boor? There is a reason Robespierre has reached the top. Many have tried to knock him down, and they have all lost. You will lose too if you face him alone. Even if I lose, I will be able to discuss terms with him. Alexis is right. On our own, each of us are easy prey. Gabel will betray you at the first opportunity because it is much better for him to join forces with Robespierre. They both hate the rule of reason, but Gobel has yet to reveal this to you. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go with humility. Let us say I have influence on someone who will make a better scapegoat than Gobel. Prosecutor Tonville. I will resign from my post in the Committee of Public Safety and propose that Tonville should replace me. Robespierre will turn his attention to him, and we will gain some freedom to act. Tonville is a prosecutor and enjoys a good reputation among the people. It is possible that Robespierre could see him as a rival for the position of the highest statesman of France. Oh, wow. All I have to do is show him that power is within his reach. Tonville wants it as much as we do. It might work. Strict cooperation and trust will be the key to conquering Robespierre. All right. Let us get rid of Robespierre once and for all. Okay. Yes, that went well. That wasn't good. Also, I will be happy to get rid of Tinville. I mean, he's a little bit crazy. Shopping? You know, I'm pretty sure that you're going to stab me in the back, but you know, you can... You could at least look good while doing it, so... Oh, no, 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 don't. Come on, why? I have no points to set him free again, so I guess I'll just wait. He is going there to... Lower the fervor a bit. He is an enemy diplomat and... Well, you know, let's just go fight here. Now let's intrigue. So I guess we had one... What? <gasps> Gobel's son has once more paid him a visit. This time their argument become more heated and included a firearm. We do not know what matter what manner of accusations were made during the meeting. The testimonies of the neighbors, however, led us to believe that the conversation eventually turned into a fight that ended with a bullet into Gobel's chest. He died where he fell and Boutin has been arrested. Your murdered child has been avenged. You could excel exculpate the murderer after all you were responsible for luring him out of hiding. But it wasn't Gobel, right? Oh no. <laughs> Cause we do we we looked for him. Oh no. <laughs> Prosecutor Tin Will will make a perfect human shield. He will take Danton's place with a clean record and we will use his gratitude in the future. Moreover, we will get Robespierre's blood up since he will probably interpret this as a move toward us again toward us gaining control over the Committee of Public Safety. Oh no, we have no points to spend. Damn it. Danton is ready to resign his position at any moment. Everything is happening suspiciously fast. Because you were not expecting it, an independent observer would say that you have worked hard to get this promotion. I could, it could also be an obvious trap. Huh. It could be, but it's not, trust me. Buddy. Okay, so he's carefree, so let's go with carelessness. That's always at least a good thing. This is how the greatest have reached for power. Attached was manipulation too, so there is no one more suitable than you. Let's go with that. 
Ha, huh, this is how the greatest have reached for power. I mean, I would like to manipulate that too. Or maybe humility. And you have our support. Let's go with manipulating and here with humility and let's see what happens. Yes. Strong, perfect, perfect and strong. Nice. Okay, let's go. You do not seem to be a person able to live with the knowledge that someone else does your work, as I already do in the court. I am not the right person to save the reputation of the Committee of Public Safety. There are better and more experienced candidates. This is your chance to join the pantheon of the revolution's heroes forever. Seize the opportunity, as Danton once did. The committee needs to be supervised. It must be transparent and lawful. Who else could be assigned this difficult task? <laughs> Danton and Hébert decided that you are the best possible candidate. They asked my opinion and I agreed with them. You know, have power... You now have powerful support. This is your chance of a lifetime. Fine. I will think this through and give you my answer tomorrow in the courtroom. Nice. Will I be rid of him? Will I get a new prosecutor? Prosecutor. That was a success. That was nice. Oh no. I know who we're going to judge next, but we're going to do this in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.